There are two things in business that you need to worry about. You need to worry about capital, i.e. money, and you need to worry about people. Um, so those are the two things. I, I simplify because in, in, in leadership, you always do have to simplify. I have to simplify to myself because I'm very simple. But you, you have to simplify down to these two things. So first of all, let me tell you a little bit about the money side. Now, setting up a business is a really expensive thing to do. So part of this survey that I did, um, I found out that the average entrepreneur who is setting up a company that is a high growth company, i.e. has growth potential, turning over around about two to three hundred thousand pounds a year after they've been going only for two years. So really high growth companies. Um, what I found was that average entrepreneur, particularly in the technology sector, has invested somewhere in the region of 680,000 pounds themselves into the business and then had to put in more over and above that. They will find of the capital that they need, they will find 80% of that themselves. <laughs> so um, this £2,000 to help people set up businesses um, is, is kind of a bit silly, really. I've had to develop the website. I've had to employ people in order to be able to get the knowledge base of what is essentially a software business. We've had to build the big data platform. I've had to have people around me who can do all of this without being able to sell anything because the product wasn't ready. So. Finance has been something of an issue all the way through. So I had to take on, a, I had to take on an investor from outside. And I think, um, you know, within these four walls, four-ish walls, um, it's, quite it's quite an interesting story because managing a business angel investment relationship is another area where you really need to think through exactly how you present yourself, exactly what you want rather than what they want. Okay, so this is the type of leader I hope I am. Never do anything unless you know what you want to do, unless you've got a really strong sense of self and a really strong sense of where you want to drive to. Because I didn't know who I was when I first set up Delta Economics. I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. A lot of the mistakes that I've made, a lot of the problems that I've had have been because of that lack of connection with myself and where, where I want to go. And, and you will get, particularly men anywhere, telling you, you need to do this, you need to do that, listen to my stories of my business. It's all about other people telling me what to do and me going, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, um, and doing it. I'll jump how high. This is my business, for goodness sake. And a year ago, I thought to myself, this is absolutely ridiculous. I'm dreading going to work in the morning. I'm not enjoying what I do. I'm running my own business. This is meant to be about self-actualization and fulfillment and enjoying myself, etc. What's going wrong? And I suddenly realized there was nothing going wrong with other people. It was me. Um, and I'll just leave you that. Can entrepreneurs be leaders? I don't know. But if you have a very strong sense of who you are, you can do anything. Thank you. So what I want to offer you today is the very foundation of authenticity. And it also links with something that Emilia said earlier on, presence in leadership. So what does leadership presence actually mean? And um, in the, the, the practice that I'll offer you this morning, we're going to go down to the very fundamental root of leadership presence and leadership authenticity. Um, everybody knows about mindfulness. So it's, um, uh, yeah, people are recognizing benefits in all kinds of different contexts. So how do we define it? Of course, it's all about how we use our most important brain resource, and that is attention. It's training the muscle of attention. And so what I want to do is quickly place into a framework for you. So why, why mindfulness and leadership? In terms of, of this particular model, EQ, it's a powerful way to raise levels of awareness 
And of course, it's also a fantastic way, more, the more aware you are, the more able you are to manage yourself to manage emotions, to manage your thoughts, to manage your behavior. And so you can be a model for others in, in, as a leader. So the, uh, and then, of course, um, because you are more self-aware, it, it, um, from moving from intrapersonal to interpersonal, you become more aware socially. So you become more effective in your relationships with others. And going back to what I was saying earlier on about presence, presence begins in the body. 